What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the Best Self Blueprint. This will be episode 96. If you follow me on social media, you know there was an announcement recently that I am very excited to talk about. So I figured this is probably the best opportunity to jump back into the podcast to talk about that project, talk about I recently, about a month ago now, did the Grand Canyon Rim to Rim. So talking about that and just talking about best self, my vision for the future, and what's going on. So episode 96, let's get into it. All right, let's get into it, shall we? So like I said, if you have followed me on social media in the past couple weeks, you saw something. I made a post about a project that's going down next year, 2025. It is a run across the state of Wisconsin. So the goal is a 202 mile route takes me from Prairie du Chien to the lakefront in Milwaukee and crossing the entire state coast to coast. The idea is to do this in six days with a crew of at least five people per day to do a documentary on it, to make it an experience for everyone involved, to fundraise some money and a whole bunch of other stuff. So that's the first thing I wanna get into. The question that I get asked, and I'm sure you're thinking it, is why do this? Like what what's the benefit of it? Especially because after I did the 100 miler, I swore I'd never do that again. I was 100% convinced that I was never touching that distance again. And I, I have a very extensive checklist in my head of something, something needed to hit all of these things for me to even consider doing this distance again, because it's taxing. It's a, it's a long buildup. It's a strenuous training process to get ready for something like this. And it's a pretty selfish thing inherently where you're you're asking the people closest to you to give you the space to go after this thing that's going to take up a lot of time from the start of the training process through past the actual experience itself. So there needed to be an extensive checklist. And on top of that, there's inevitably a piece of me that was pursuing these bigger and bigger races for proving something to myself, proving something to other people, whatever that may be, those are things I'm still unpacking about before, but I was so confident to let go of the ultra space because when I did the hundred, that feeling was resolved. Like, once I hit the 100, there was no doubt in my mind, I've proven what I need to prove in this space to myself, to other people, whatever that was about, whatever traumas or things were trying to be filled with that. I think it was the race itself. I think it was the support of the people around me, the amazing people that helped me pull that off. That whole experience healed a lot of things. And so I never, I never thought I'd feel the pull to do it again because there wasn't that gap that needed something to close it, to, to mend that wound, whatever, of feeling valuable, of feeling worthy. So that was one of the things on the checklist was if I'm going to do something like this, it can't be to prove anything to anyone. It has to just be for the joy of the process of becoming that next evolution. So that was the first thing. The second thing was it had to actually be an adventure. So for the 100, it was an experience for sure. It was an emotional, mental, psychological adventure. But physically, I was in the same five kilometer loop for a day and a half. This gives me the range to explore my home state end to end in a way very few people if anyone has actually done. 
on foot, coast to coast, 202 miles over six days. So that was another piece of it. The third thing was it has to genuinely scare the crap out of me because I'm a big believer that if if I set a goal already knowing I can do it, there's not as much excitement and there's not much urgency in making sure that I follow the process of growth leading up to it properly. So it needed to be something that I look at and I'm like, holy crap, that is terrifying. And covering the entirety of the state covering over double the distance of the longest race I ever thought I'd do. That's a thinker. That, that's a scary prospect. But I also know that with all the lessons I've learned, all the experience I have, I know it's possible if I do the right things the right way, build properly, put the right people around me, get the right team, it's doable but it's scary. So it has to be an adventure. It has to be more than about just the the race or run itself. It has to be terrifying. And it can't be for any reason other than the enjoyment that comes from the experience of something like this. So that's why I'm doing it. Now let's get into the details. So May 17th, I'll go out with the initial crew to the West Coast. Again, I don't know which way my camera is going to have me pointing, but to me, this is the West Coast. We'll drive out on May 17th. That's a Saturday. We'll take the afternoon, recheck gear, go over the game plan, and then Sunday, May 18th, it kicks off. And it'll be six days, so on Friday the 23rd, around noon or 1 p.m., if I follow the plan properly, which we have no idea what's going to happen throughout those six days. If the plan goes well, the idea is to be pulling up via my feet to the Pierhead Lighthouse Friday around noon or one, and then we'll do the whole, you know, rip the tequila shot, have a grill out, hang out, have a good time. But within the six days, one of the biggest things I want to do differently is instead of just a grip my tea, super intense push through and through, I want this to be an experience for the crew that's out there with me every single day. So every day we'll have the crew chief. So that's the person who's making sure nutrition is on point, hydration is on point. I have, you know, swap shoes if I need to, socks if I need to, all of that stuff. We'll have a pacer, so that's just someone on standby to get out there and log some miles with me if and when I need it, and I will need it. A driver, so a person who's responsible for getting everyone to the places they need to be. And then the part that I'm very excited about is we're going to have a documentary person who's in charge of getting footage of this whole thing because we're going to make a documentary about it. And then a social media person keeping on top of the fundraiser that we're doing, which I'll get into, keeping on top of uh, just where we're at, how everyone's doing, updating social media, keeping everyone in the loop. So five-person crew every day for six days. And the hope is that I can get done early enough each day that the crew can then go out to dinner, hang out connect with each other. And the idea is to make this again, just a, a true adventure and experience where everyone there gets to unplug from life. And I, I say disconnect from the world to reconnect with yourself. I'm hoping this provides the opportunity for everyone who's a part of this project to do that, to disconnect for whether they crew for a day or six days, disconnect from the world, reconnect with themselves, and connect or reconnect with the other people involved in the project and just enjoy the energy that comes from an effort like this, from an adventure like this. I'm guessing most of the people on the crew will be from Wisconsin and I'm guessing it's not something any of them have done is see the entirety of 
this route. So I'm very excited about that. Again, I don't want to go too far into it because we don't have a ton of the details, but there will be a documentary about it. The idea is to make it a pretty standard ultra documentary if you've ever looked into one for any reason. Uh, just doing some interview footage, some shots of along the way, seeing, again, how the crew's doing, how I'm doing, just documenting the experience. I think it'll be a really cool item to be able to go back and see the experience from the lens of outside of myself. So we got the route, we got the when, we got the crew. Now let's talk about the fundraiser. So if you followed along my journey of doing these crazy events, trying to push my boundaries of, again, I say becoming, becoming the next version of myself, which these training camps do, because you have to face your inadequacies. You have to face the gaps in your life because you don't have time for a whole bunch of fluff. You have your training, which takes a good few hours a day when you're logging this many miles and doing strength and mobility and recovery. You've got work, you've got family, you've got friends, all of these things. That was going off course. So all of that to say, the becoming aspect is a big piece of why I do this. But I've also always connected these efforts to fundraising events. And I've done that for charity. This one, I want to be a little vulnerable and just ask because I have an amazing community of people who are always willing to help. And so I'm going to do this fundraiser for Best Self. I'm going to do this fundraiser for the vision that I have to help as many people as I can become healthy and not just physically healthy, mentally healthy, emotionally healthy, spiritually healthy, relationally healthy. And I have a plan for that, but a big part of it is I want to ask the community to trust in my vision and help me catalyze the growth for best self. So the bulk of the fundraising will go towards helping us bring on new coaches, put on more events, do all the stuff, which I'm going to get into in a little bit. So if you're curious about that, please stick around. But each of the six days has a set mileage to it. So anywhere from 20 to 40 miles in a day. And the different days will be corresponding with different charities. So days one and two will be the Jackson Sparks Foundation. Days three and four will be the No Worries None. And then days five and six, the charity that I rep probably most of all, the Little Warrior Foundation. For anyone who sponsors those days and donates that mileage in dollars or more, I'm not going to turn away more fundraising, but you sponsor whatever day you want and 20% of that sponsorship will go towards that charity. So again, day one is 40 miles. So if you sponsor day one, 20% of 40, I'm gonna say is eight. If my math is wrong, so be it, but I'm pretty confident 20% of 40 is eight. So $8 of that will go to the Jackson Sparks Foundation. $32 of that will go into a fund that's going to help us put on events, do more uh, community outreach stuff. Just, again, expand the vision for Best Self. So that's how the fundraiser is going to work. But I took a decent amount of time off of even thinking about my own crazy projects because I wanted to just get back into the process, like the process of finding what feels fun and exciting about fitness and health again. And there, there were some trials and errors of just like for a while, once I did the 100, I didn't want to do cardio at all. So I just was doing a bunch of strength training, didn't feel very good. I just felt very like not chunky, but just like bigger than I feel ideal at. So then it was just trying to find that harmony for me of 
what's like a good consistent cardio fitness? What is a good sense of strength? What's a good sense of mobility? And how do those harmonize to make me feel optimal consistently? And to me, that's fun. I'm not saying I love working out every day. There's always days that I just want to hit the snooze button, crawl back in bed. There are plenty of days I did do that. But now I'm starting to get that itch of like, all right, let's, let's really push. But beyond that, there have been some things that have happened recently. And this isn't a woe is me card, but there's people that I've, I know who have passed away. There's people I know who have been having sickness in the family, issues that just point to really a wake-up call of the finite nature of life and the fact that we hope to stay healthy, build a solid foundation, and live a long, happy life, but also understanding that that doesn't mean delaying life, like actually living and doing crazy, fun, exciting, spontaneous things that make the life extraordinary, whatever that means for the individual. And for me, a big piece of that is doing things like this that are big efforts, all-consuming projects, things that force me to level up in so many different areas of life. So that's kind of why I wanted to get into that first. All of that to also say, if you do have any interest in being part of this project, that could be donating, that could be being part of the crew, that could be just cheering us on, helping spread the word, get more people involved. However you would want to be involved, definitely reach out to me. All of the links to all of the socials are always in the comments, or not comments, like the description of these videos. Uh, follows on social media, my personal account, the best self account, and reach out. I want there to be a lot of people involved in this. I want this to be like a party fitness style. So reach out, we'll get you involved. But that's the first thing I wanted to talk about. Now let's get into kind of my most recent adventure, which was the Grand Canyon Rim to Rim. So for those of you who don't know what that is, you could probably guess it's going from the North Rim to the South Rim ideally in a single day effort. Some people, I think the world record for it, I could be wrong, but it is sub three hours, which is absolutely insane. I think if you stick to the standard route and don't like bebop around or deviate, it's about 21, 22 miles, something like that. The total ground we covered was 27 miles, over 10,000 feet of elevation change. And we did it in about 13 and a half hours, but we also took over an hour break in Phantom Ranch, which is this really cool hangout spot in the base of the canyon. This was one that was a huge wake up call for me because again, I haven't been doing a crazy amount of cardio leading up to this. I, I was still doing cardio, still staying relatively fit and in shape, but I wasn't training for this. And I went in with an ego because, again, I'm, I'm the ultra guy. I'm the adventure guy. I, this should be a walk in the park. And let me tell you, I got humbled so, so quick. The descent was really fun. We walked it, and I wanted to just bomb it, but, you know, to be safe and smart, we walked. So we hiked the descent, felt pretty good, walked the flat, felt pretty good. But then there's the switchbacks up the south end. And that was genuinely one of the toughest efforts I've put in to just like a, was supposed to be kind of more of a fun little trek through the park. Maybe I was the only one dumb enough to think of it like that, but I definitely thought that it was just going to be literally a walk in the park. We go out, we eat some snacks, we have a good time, but it was brutal. And we had a group of 20 people. We got done towards the front. There were a couple people who got done before us. But our group finished probably about three, three and a half hours apart between the first people to get done and the last people to get done. And it's, if you want a challenge, rim to rim at the Grand Canyon is something to put on the bucket list. 
And beyond that, it is so... I can honestly say it's unbelievably beautiful. Like, turning around at the end and looking back at everything we had just walked through, the magnitude of it is even being there, seeing it with my own eyes, it's tough to really understand. Because it is, I mean, the Grand Canyon has a very apt name. The magnitude of it is just so surreal. And it's amazing to see the capability of the human body to cover that entire distance. Like, a distance that even looking out seemed like there's no possible way a human could cover that in a day. And where we came from was further around a corner in a single day. It's it's so cool. And that's the stuff that really lights me up. And I hope you listening to this, again, it doesn't have to be some crazy thing like this, but going out and exploring, like getting a taste of the world and the beauty in it and the wonder in it and doing it with people that have that reverence for life, people that will add to the experience, I think is such an important thing. And that's something I was very lucky about because I knew a few of the people in this group. That's how I got invited. But in a group of 20, probably 75% of the people I, I didn't know. And being able to connect with people who share that love for life and adventure and just getting out and doing the dang thing. It's like medicine. And so that's kind of my ask is get intentional about building your life resume. Get intentional about stacking experiences that are just to fill your soul up, just to give you that sense of being truly alive and being aligned with the highest sense of yourself, knowing that you're connected with yourself, with the people around you, with the world around you, and just being enveloped in beautiful experiences. And ask yourself, is that something that you're intentional about? Like consistently putting things on the life resume that like just light you up to talk about. I can tell you right now, I was just at a family party yesterday and it was almost difficult for me to shut up about this run across Wisconsin project because it's just so freaking cool to me. And there are probably plenty of people that don't care at all. And that's, that's fine. But whatever that is to you, whatever that passion is, wherever that lies in your life, whatever area or arena, go after it, go do something with it. Life, if we're lucky, is a long, beautiful journey. But keep in mind, again, I'm not saying I hope people have this wake-up call in the way that I've had it recently. I hope it just comes to you through realizing it and not external things putting it in your face. But I ask that you wake up to the fact that every day is truly a gift. And I think I've stated this before on the podcast, but my personal belief, my opinion about life is that God's gift to us is waking up in the morning and just filling our day with potential. Our gift back to God is realizing that potential. And that doesn't always mean, that almost never means the same thing for anyone. It's as unique as our fingerprint, but Whatever that means to you, tapping in and optimizing your potential. That could be just being really present with your family. That could be grinding out a project for work. That could be getting in the gym. That could be so many different things, learning a new skill, going to a no, new place. Whatever it is for you, that's my kind of big ask throughout this episode is go for it. Do not delay. Do not procrastinate. Go for it. That's my ask for today. All right. The last thing I wanted to get into in this episode is studio updates. So like I said, the fundraiser is not just 
a way to get free money. My vision moving forward for the studio is boiled down into kind of really three buckets. The first one is in the actual studio. I kind of think of it as like my Avengers team of studio coaches. So I want to fill the space with health experts that work in a variety of modalities, fitness, nutrition, recovery, stress management, sleep, all of it, and just get a network of coaches all through Best Self where people know they can have one access point into the studio and have an entire network of coaches for whatever they need. That Whether that's massage, a workout program, a meal program, life coaching, health coaching, so many different things that I would love to get in front of people. Like, for example, I'm, I'm talking to a coach whose specialty is life coaching for adults with ADHD. Having a network of coaches with that type of niche specialty mixed in with generalists that are operating at such a high level, that's the goal for in-studio. That being said, if you know someone, definitely have them reach out. If you are someone, definitely reach out. I want to build my Avengers team of coaches. So that's the first thing. And with fundraising comes the ability to put that message in front of more coaches and bring in the best of the best talent. The second thing is more events. Some of these will be paid events, so like races, fitness challenges, seminars, workshops, that kind of thing, but also more community outreach. I want to do more like fitness in the park days where we we have a, like good quality equipment to bring for people in a variety of athletic abilities to come out, get active, get some fresh air, doing free workshops where I can foot the bill to bring in experts to teach our community about different things. So that's the second piece is more events. And then the third piece is more content and higher quality content. I believe very strongly that every aspect of input influences who we are, how we feel, how we act, how we speak, the beliefs we hold, all of those things. And I, I have gotten so much value out of the content that I watch, whether it be podcasts, short little informative clips or motivational clips of people that inspire me. And I want this documentary of Running Across Wisconsin to be the first of many things like this. So higher value on the podcast, bigger guests, more content that helps inspire, educate, empower you to be your best self and to equip you with tools that help you identify for you what does that mean. Because one thing I hope I do a good job at and I know I'll continue to level up is not necessarily trying to put my definition of best self in your head. My goal is to empower you and give you a container to play around in finding what that definition is for you and then giving you the tools to go after it and showing you examples of people who have and hopefully being an example of someone who is. So that's the goal. That's the mission with Best Self is create a community of coaches that are high level and hold a network within ourselves to give you the best help no matter what it is you need help with. And if we don't have a coach, having an affiliation. So shout out Sarah Sawal, a PT, who I, every person I've sent to her has raving reviews. And even people who don't end up working with her, she'll still follow up and help in any way she can. Having affiliations with people like that in this community is huge because the last thing I want to do is a have the ego and say I can help you with anything and everything when I know there are people smarter than me in a lot of areas of health and wellness or b have to refer you to people that I can't put my stamp of approval on knowing 
what a quality level of help looks like through these different modalities. So that's the hope. Just build the community of coaches, put on more events because in an age where we're more connected than ever, it feels like a lot of people are distant or have a hard time deeply connecting despite yearning for that. And so I want to put on more events that allow for that opportunity, for like-minded people to come together, celebrate life, celebrate our ability to do certain things like run, hike, work out, do all that stuff, and then create the content that packages it up and shares it to the world. So if that's something that you believe in, please, all I ask is stay aware of developments with the Run Across Wisconsin project. There will be a lot of opportunities to actively participate, donate, and help us raise funds to put on events, to grow the company, make it go bigger, do more, help more people. That's the ask. So I've asked a few things of you during this podcast. Hopefully, at least the living with intention and going after what you want, you'll stick with. If it's something that you believe in, staying close to how Best Self is developing, staying aware of the events that are going to be coming up because there are events coming up, hint, hint, wink, wink. And also, I've got a couple of really cool podcast guests that are coming up that this is kind of the intro back into the podcast episode. I believe this will be 96. A lot of cool things coming up. So just stay ready, stay aware. As always, thank you so much for tuning in. Whether you're getting a workout in right now, getting to work right now, or getting a little rest hanging out on the couch right now, if you've made it to this point, I thank you. And stay tuned because there's a lot more coming down the pipeline. We will catch you next time. Peace.